Hello there, I'm a Satharian and welcome to my first tier list video. In this one, I'll go over all of the BM Hunter trinkets in Season 4 and I'll do my best to rank them based on general usefulness in both Raid and Mythic Plus, based on some early PTR sims and my experience with these trinkets throughout Dragonflight, because of course all of these trinkets have been featured in the game before, either from Mythic Plus dungeons in previous seasons or previous raids. Uh, this video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters. Check out the link in the description for some Hunter perks like coaching and access to my Hunter Compendium for Season 4. If you're watching this in the future, for the most up-to-date information on Trinkets, you should check my Icy Veins guide in the description below, as that will be where the updated where this video may not be. Please do leave feedback in the comments so I can improve on this form of content in the future. Alright, and without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So we're starting out with a Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge here. Uh, so this trinket is basically a pretty decent stat stick. Uh, sort of like, yeah, it's basically just a, a hefty amount of flat stats and then sometimes it'll proc for like a seriously hefty amount of stats. And it just kind of rotates randomly. A lot of people read the tooltip of this trinket and they assume you can manipulate it somehow, but you cannot. Uh, so I'm going to put this in the A tier. So I'm skipping a few trinkets here that are melee only. Moving on to the uh, Alacritus Alchemist Stone. So this is the Alchemist Stone that you can craft for alchemists. One thing worth noting in Season 4 is that crafted items appear to be 6 eye levels lower than um, like mythic fully upgraded items, which is 3 eye levels lower than usual. So crafted items have taken a bit of a hit. This trinket was never good though, regardless of item level. Um, yeah, and it's just going straight in the F tier because I just don't see any reason you'd ever craft this or spend a spark on it. Alright, next up is the, the Bottle of Spiraling Sands, I believe it's called, and this one is going in the B tier. It's another kind of stat stick trinket, it has a uh, pretty powerful main stat proc, and then there's Passive Haste, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, let me just make ensure that I am, yes I am. Uh, which is pretty solid, uh, but yeah, not really tuned all, all, all that well, so it's going in the B tier. Next up is the Class Trinket, so this one is pretty interesting. The longer you spend between your Beastial Wrath uses, the more uh, stacks you'll build up of this. And then when you use Beastial Wrath, you'll get a big agility proc. Uh, this one is actually pretty solid, especially on AoE, I find. Uh, and if the fight for any reason causes you to have a lot of space between two Beastial Wraths, and you can stack this up for like a big burst, it can become really, really good. Uh, so I'm putting this in the A tier. Next up is uh, the Whispering Incarnate Icon. From, um, from Vault of the Incarnate's Primal Council. It's a very rare trinket, so it's pretty hard to see, or pretty hard to find. Um, but it's basically a really, really powerful stat stick. Like, it's just the best for pretty much all situations, even if you have no allies. So this trinket, it gets better if there are people in your group that also have it. But even without that, it's going straight in the S tier. It's like the best trinket. Next up is Spiteful Storm. This is an interesting trinket from Rasageth in the Vault of the Incarnates. It's a trinket that get, that's designed to get stronger, um, like the longer the fight goes on, and it can like barely creep into sort of B tier territory if the fight lasts long enough. But it's terrible for any kind of multi-target, and most fights, especially in Faded, are just not going to be that long. So this is going in the F tier. Next up is the Erupting Spear Fragment. So this one is like a one and a half minute on use trinket that gives a, a bit of stats. And also there's a little bit of damage on its own. It's, uh, it's pretty decent, but like the amount of effort that because you have to place it on the ground and everything, for the effort that you invest uh, in using it compared to other trinkets and just its overall tuning, it's going in the B tier. Next up is the Idol of Pure Decay. This is pretty much a, like a, not a stat stick, but it's a trinket that will just do single target damage. It does do a pretty hefty amount of single target damage, but not enough to beat the top trinkets. And it is also dragged down by being, you know, only single target and not really helping much in AoE. So it's going in the B tier. Iridius Fragment is a really, really powerful unused trinket with a 3 minute unuse that gives you a ton of uh, main stat, which decays over time. Unfortunately, it's not really tuned all that well, and BM is a 2 minute class and not a 3 minute one. This trinket tends to work better for uh, sort of 3 minute classes, and so it's going in the B tier. The Storm Eater Spoon is a very interesting trinket. It's a 3 minute unuse and it basically locks you in place when you use it and does a ton of AoE damage around you. You have to be in melee range to use it and you cannot move while using it. You can turtle while using it, um, but that's about it. 
So if you need a really, really big AoE burst at a key point in the fight, it can be really strong. But it's also extremely risky to use if you have not planned it properly. So I'm putting this one in the situational tier. Because for the most part you won't use it, but there are moments where it's just like clearly insane. Alright, next up is the Dragonfire Bomb Dispenser. So this one is a bit like Idle, but a stronger version. In that like the single target potential is like borderline S tier, but it is really only single target. And this is not pro probably not going to be a very single target heavy season. Because I'm like the raid is probably not going to be the hard part. There's no progression or anything. It's going to be very M plus heavy. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in the A tier. Next up is one of these Dark Moon uh, cards. Uh, so this one is basically just, it stacks like a little bit of uh, physical damage. Um, it's, a, yeah, so once again, single target only, not really uh, highly tuned. So it's going in the uh, in the F tier, just because it has almost nothing going for it, and it would re require a spark to actually craft. All right, and the same goes for the other two. Uh, so this is the strongest of the Dark Moon deck trinkets, but uh, the Inferno and Rhyme ones are also really, really bad. All right, that brings us on to the idol. Uh, so there are actually multiple kinds of these trinkets. This is the idol of the Earthwater icon I've got here for the tier list. But there are other versions of this trinket that just give different secondaries. They're all roughly equally good. And that is to say they're a stat stick uh, kind of trinket and they provide uh, a decent amount of like, depending on which one you get a different secondary stat, it's going in the B tier because it will also require you to, you know, spend a spark to actually get it. All right, next up is uh, the Bandolier. This one I wasn't really going to put on here, but it, I guess it's kind of useful. So this is a 90 second cooldown, a one and a half minute uh, melee on use trinket. You can use it, you just have to be in melee when you do. It's pretty highly tuned if you go in there. Um, but it's not like beating the much easier to use trinkets elsewhere. So I'm going to put it... Ooh, I'm not... Not kind of debating with myself on this one if it's situational, but I don't really think it's situational because... I don't think there's a situation where it's best. Um, but it is reasonably tuned, so I'm going to put it in the B tier, but with that caveat. Next up is the Beacon uh, to the Beyond. So this one is a 3 minute on use trinket with a huge, um, like a really, really big, like instant damage hit that scales a little bit, like it gains 15% damage per target up to 5 targets. Really, really insane instantaneous burst, one of the best trinkets for this. Overall damage is not really highly tuned though, so it's going in the situational tier. It's a bit like Storm Eater Spoon, but like a single target version. Like if you just need the biggest instantaneous, like very short term burst on a 3 minute cooldown, then the beacon can be really good. It has been used to like make certain higher keys possible. Because like if multiple people have this trinket, you can rotate it between uh, different like add spawns in Mythic Plus for killing these things that just need to die really, really quickly. Alright. Next up is the Ruby Whelp Shell. Now this is a bit of a weird trinket. Uh, I could make a whole video about how this trinket works. Um, but basically if you train the Whelpling, and this is a whole other thing, you can read the Wowhead comments about this trinket for information. But if you train it to the correct thing and you train it fully, it at best becomes like a B tier trinket. And it takes quite a bit of effort and understanding to even get it there. But yeah, that, that is where it belongs uh, on pure tuning. Next up is the Coiled Serpent Idol. So this is a pretty decent uh, single target damage hitter trinket. Just like the Idol and so on. It's going in the B tier. Next up is the Elgath R Puzzle Box. This is a 3 minute unused trinket that gives a ton of mastery uh, for quite a long time. But it has a little bit of a cast time. One interesting thing to note about this trinket is that you can activate it uh, between globals. Or like in, you can activate a global and then activate the trinket in that global. And by the time that global is over, the trinket cast will be almost over. So in a sense, you can treat it a bit like an instant cast. It can be really powerful, just like Boon, uh, when you need a big burst. But it's also pretty highly tuned in general. And so it's going in the A tier. Maybe S tier for some situations. I'd say, actually, if so, if, you're, if you only want to use one trinket for like, like, or two trinkets for everything, Icon and Puzzle Box are a pretty good bet. Uh, and so I'll push it up to S tier just for that reason, because otherwise S tier is too quiet. Uh, but you'll see later on what else could go in there. So yeah. The Ignis Flowstone is a, uh, it spawns this Magma Serpent. Basically it's a damage dealing single target trinket. 
it is pretty decent at that, but not really much better than so many of the other trinkets that do the same thing. And it's going into B tier. Next up is the, uh, what's it called, Ominous Chromatic Essence. So this is a stat stick trinket where you choose the stat. Uh, obviously its uh, strength depends a little bit on what stat you have it to proc, but if you have it proc the best one generally, it's kind of just like a worse pips in terms of like its role in your kit and in terms of tuning. And so it's going in the B tier. Next up is the Screaming Black Dragon Scale. And this is also basically a stat stick trinket. It gives a little bit of speed, I believe, but uh, yeah, nothing special there. It's going into B tier. Next up is the Manic Grief Torch. So this one is super highly tuned for single target. And in fact, if there are people in your group who are dying uh, with any regular frequency, this trinket becomes super powerful because basically when someone dies in within like, I think it's 20 yards of you, um, it cuts like almost, it basically resets the cooldown of this trinket. So especially like on like proc, there won't be much proc this time, but let's say just a messy kill. Uh, if a lot of people are dying towards the end, you can just do back-to-back -back grief torches and can become really insane. But remember, even without that, it's quite strong. Uh, and for that, it's going at S tier. Another thing worth noting about this trinket. Um, so for Mythic Plus, for example, its overall damage may not be that great, but it's really powerful on use and it's all prior damage. You can just, if people are dying in your Mythic Plus, and like it's on a boss, like you just send these grief torches, like your your single target damage in Mythic Plus can just potentially be quite insane for this, like a tyrannical or something. Like anywhere, like you play Mythic Plus, people die in there. Grief torch is just good. Like the worse your group is, arguably the better grief torch becomes, as long as you're the one staying alive. All right, next up is Ashes of the Ember Soul. Uh, so this trinket is a really powerful two minute on use trinket. Uh, worth noting about this is that it doesn't have passive agility. That means more of its proc value is um, is inside of its like more of its overall DPS value is inside the proc, which means it's one of the burstiest trinket trinkets on this list. Um, that makes it a bit situational, of course, because sometimes like like the speed of damage, like burst damage, can be more important than overall damage in some cases. But even tuning wise, it's actually quite a bit better than it was in season three from my simulations, and so it's going into A tier. Next up is the Globe of Jagged Ice. It does some damage, it doesn't do a lot of it, it's going in the F tier. Next up is the Controlled Current Technique. So this is a specially interesting trinket uh, for BM in that it uh, improves pet attack speed as well. Uh, it used to be like in Season 1 it was like super powerful. I believe it's either been nerfed or just been outscaled at this point, I'm not quite sure. It's still quite good, good though for both AoE and single target and it's going in A tier. Next up is the Augury of the Primal Flame. This trinket is, um, it's the only like super high eye level trinket, like it's 535 fully upgraded, drops from Fire Egg Mythic. Um, and it's basically like when you crit, it'll uh, like stack up and do extra damage, scales up to five targets. It's not really great at anything and a lot of its value is tied up in this proc. It's not like bad by any means, but especially considering its eye level, it's a little bit disappointing. So it's going in the B tier. And of course, the remaining trinkets down here are either melee or not really uh, useful for BM in any way. So yeah, that's the tier list. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you would have placed any of these differently, if you feel there's anything I missed or any mistakes I made, <laughs> please do let me know. And uh, yeah, until next time, I wish everyone watching a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.